What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're doing Linux system hardening from TryHackMe. Now this room is more of an educational room than a city of style room. So basically there are around 10 tasks or literally there are 8 tasks. So the first one is intro and the last one is conclusion. So we're left with literally 8 tasks to go over. Okay, so to maximize the benefits of this series, I'm going to solve two tasks or one task per video. So basically there is nothing uh, 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 difficult about these tasks, okay? The only thing that matters here is you understanding the concept of every task. So for example, file system partitioning and encryption is uh, laid down here in an individual task or as an individual task, just to let you understand the concept of encryption and file system partitioning as a way of hardening Linux systems. So what we're going to do, we're going to explain the concept of every single task using the attack box here, okay, along with uh, the notes I have in here. So the first thing is the encryption as a method to harden Linux systems. So we have got two methods to, we have got two ways to encrypt or to implement encryption on Linux or maybe Windows as well. First thing is encrypting individual files. And the other thing is encrypting the entire driver to partition. Now this task lays down an approach to encrypting a partition or a drive. At the same time, in the questions here, okay, it is actually the author has encrypted a single image file, okay, and it's asking you to decrypt the image file. So basically this task takes into consideration both aspects of encryption, drive encryption and file encryption. So to start, let's first connect with the machine. You can find the connection details here. So that's the username, connect with this command, and that's the password. Once you do that, you'll be able to connect to the machine. So let me first zoom in. All right, so the first thing, let's talk about drive encryption or partition encryption. This can be a drive in uh, this can be a partition or it can be an external drive. So the first thing before implementing any sort of drive encryption, we have first to understand what kind of partitions we have. So we can do that using one of these commands, fdisk or lsplk or other bulk ID. So the first one, let's talk about this one. fdisk-l will display permission denied. Let's see if we can use sudo here. Okay. So as you can see, the output here displayed the partitions and the disk drive. So we have, as you can see, they are highlighted here. Disk one, this is a disk. And this is another disk. Scrolling down as well, or scrolling up, we can see the other disks as well. It's important to list all of the disks and the partitions under every disk to be able to um, find out what kind of, what is the partition you want to encrypt. You can also use this tool. And as you can see here, this disk XVDA has this partition XVDA1. So this is very crucial when you want to use one of the encryption tools as you will need the partition name maybe you will need other information as well that you can get by displaying the output or by using one of these tools all right so in this task here if we go to the home directory of that user All right, we can see a file called secret vault and there is a directory my vault. So what the question is saying, we cannot, what does uh, look stand for? We're gonna talk about this one. Now we cannot attach an external storage to the VM. So we have a grid um, file instead. It is encrypted with a password. This is the password to access this. You need to open it using crypt setup and then mount it to an empty directory such as my vault. Okay. 
So what is Crypt Setup? Crypt Setup is a collection of tools to perform encryption and decryption on your drive or on a single file. So I've let, you, can, you, can, you can actually find out the steps to installing and using Crypt uh, Setup here, but I have let down the steps in a much simpler manner here. So the first thing, these are the commands that you will need to install Crypt Setup divided depending on the operating system, Debian, Red Hat, or Fedora. Now, in the notes here, I have divided the steps based on if you want to format the partition or in case you don't want. So the first thing we have to set up the partition for Lux encryption. So we use this command. As you can see, we use this partition. This is the partition name. That's why when we go back, let's go back here. When we use one of these tools to display the devices and uh, partitions, we want to find what is the partition name because we will use the partition name in the commands while we are encrypting or decrypting with the crypt setup. So this command here, okay, will prepare the partition for encryption and it will ask you for a passphrase. Let's give an example. Let's copy this command and try to encrypt this one. So x v d a x v d a one access denied. Let's try with sudo. So it says it doesn't exist. Let's try. All right, so maybe the device is not mounted. We're not required to perform these steps on this machine because the scenario here is assuming that you are trying to encrypt an external uh, drive such as, such as a USB. So when you connect the USB to the, the device, it will show up here. <laughs> anyway, so this is the command that you will use to encrypt the drive. It will ask for a passphrase. You will put the passphrase and this method will actually render the partition encrypted now if you want to decrypt the hard drive okay you will want to perform one of the commands here this one or this one so basically you provide the partition name and then you will provide the mount point okay so the mount point is the point where the device will be mounted to in an unencrypted in an unencrypted style okay it will be unencrypted and all of the storage will be added here or you can use this command that's what we will use to solve the task so the task here it provided us with the password okay that's the passphrase actually that has been used when they first encrypted the drive using this command okay looks format now here we use looks open to decrypt crypt setup right dash v looks open or open one of them and then we provide the partition name followed by the directory or the vault that will host the contents okay so let's go back so we have the password let's copy the password and this is the let's clear this is the encrypted file okay now let's copy the command that is used to decrypt. Okay, let's use crypt setup dash v open. Now this time, instead of providing a partition name, we're going to provide the file name. Here we're talking about file encryption, not partition encryption. So here we replace the partition name with the file name. Secret let's copy that. And here instead of vault 01, I'm gonna say my vault because it's the uh, directory that will host the contents. So if you enter command not found, all right, maybe we're gonna use this one instead. So here looks open.
Looks like it's not an install at all. Let's go back. So crypt setup open dash dash type. Let's try this one in the hint. Okay, so the next step now is to mount the storage. So basically we're going to use this command. Now here we provide the path to default. It is my fault here. So my and here the directory name is also my fault. CD my vault. As you can see, we have two files. These two files were actually encrypted, represented by this file. But since we decrypted the contents of this file using crypt setup, we are now able to see the contents of the or the unencrypted or the decrypted content inside my vault that we chose previously here. Okay, don't forget that you need to mount the storage to be able to view the contents so cat task and that's the flag so as you can see guys crypt setup is one of the tools that you can use to perform encryption and decryption on partitions or on files now if we move on to the other tasks so that's for encryption so for this video i chose um, remote access so remote access here displaying recommendations about what kind of protocols you're supposed to use uh, to securely access Linux remotely. So basically, there is only one protocol, guys. It's SSH. And you can also use SFTP for file transfer, but mainly people use SSH. So to secure SSH, first we have to find out where is the configuration file of SSH. It's located under etc SSH directory. So we go to that directory. And then cat sshd. As you can see, this is the configuration file of the SSH server. Now from here, we can control all aspects of the SSH server, the functionality and the security and how it works. So when we talk about security here, um, it's always recommended to disable root logins. So we don't want users or we don't want attackers to be able to log in as root in case they were successful in their attempts so basically let's see if there if this line is added so basically if you go back to my notes here we have to add this line permit root login should be no let me check out if this file is does exist so cat and we grip root it doesn't exist so we have only one line that has the word root so what we have to do, we have to add this line to the configuration file. Permit root login should be no. So we can nano this file. Okay. And you can put this line anywhere inside the file. It doesn't matter. Once you put it, any user, no matter their privileges, will not be able to log in to the SSH server as root user. That's the first step. Other step is we have to disable password authentication. Yes, we should not rely on passwords to log into the SSH server or to log in remotely to your device. You should rely on public key infrastructure, or public key authentication. For that reason, before we use public key authentication on your SSH server, make sure first to generate a key pair. So let's generate a key pair. Let's use a new tab. Okay, we can generate key pair using this command ssh key generate dash trsa. This will generate two keys private and public key. Enter the file in which to save the private key. By default, as you can see, it saves the private key to this path. If you are using, um, it depends on which username 
you are logged in with as you can see i'm logged in as root so it's going to save the private key under root dot ssh idrsa so we're going to say yes enter passphrase for the idrsa key you can choose to put a passphrase for your private key if you want to make sure it's uh, strong for this scenario i'm going to leave it empty as you can see the pairs have been generated under dot ssh so we have public key that ends with dot pup and a private key id underscore rsa so once we have generated key pairs we need to add the public key right my public key here i need to add it to the server's authorized keys directory the target server that i'm going to log in uh, to remotely i need to add my private key to the authorized keys directory or i have another method which is using this command we can say ssh copy id let's use this one this will copy over my private my um, public key to the authorized keys so basically try hack me at and then we can copy the ip address okay now we need the password for the user So as you can see, number of keys added one. Now try logging into the machine with this one and check to make sure that only the keys you wanted were added. Now if we try to log in here, it will still ask for the password because we have not yet disabled password authentication yet, right? But once we have added the keys here, guys, next time or the next step, we're gonna disable password authentication and then when we log in, it's going to ask for the private key. So if you want to log in with the private key, you can say ssh-i and put in the path to the private key. Let's log in with the private key. Oh, what happened? Okay. As you can see, I was able to log in. So after you successfully log in to the target server with your private key, now it is safe to proceed and prevent any sort of password authentication. How I can do that? You should add this line, password authentication, no, where, at the configuration file. So if you go to the configuration file, cdetc, this is the configuration file, okay, nano, and you put in the password authentication, no, anywhere inside the file. Once you do that, you will not be able to log into the SSH server using your password. I'm not going to do that because it will maybe, uh, uh, it's not, I'm not authorized to do that because this is not my machine, it is the Try Hack Me machine. Um, in this task, you're only required to grab the flag that does exist in the configuration file. So if we get the configuration file and grab THM, you'll be able to see the flag. That's the flag for this task. So that's guys, these two tasks for encryption and secure remote access. I hope you like that and I will see you later.